I'm not gonna show you how to paint anything today, but stick with me. So friends, listen, art isn't just a means to an end. And this is so important. And honestly, I'll venture to say that listening here, soaking in what I have to say today might be the most important thing you do, might be the most important video that you watch here. Art isn't a means to an end. And I'm going to venture to say as a beginner, it shouldn't be about the final result for quite a long time. Now that's not to say you're not gonna have fun along the way. And that's not to say that you're not going to paint beautiful artwork that you can be proud of and excited to show your friends and family. Let me explain a little bit further. So Maria Montessori, some of you probably heard of her. She's an Italian physician educator. She had some strong thoughts and she was a super smart lady about education and how children should approach or how we as adults should approach our children's education. There's this one quote, and honestly, I don't remember exactly when she lived, but it went like Victorian viral, okay? Play is the work of the child, something like that. But I'm gonna argue I don't know, do we need to argue? But play is the work of anyone learning a new skill. So let me tell you a story. It's actually in one of my books. It's the intro, but I'm gonna tell you it a little differently. So I used to teach art lessons in the summers and I would teach everything from drawing and painting, card making, paper making, and all the things. And one summer uh, we got a pottery wheel on loan from the local high school. And it was super exciting because I loved wheel thrown pottery and I was super excited to teach it. And so I would bring in, in the daytime, I would bring in the kiddos. It was summer, you know, they were on break, their parents need, you get it. So these like five, six, seven year olds would come in all afternoon long and I would sit them down. They had never seen a pottery wheel before. I think most of them didn't even know what it was. They had no clue what they were doing except, 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 except they knew they were going to get dirty and play with clay. So I'd sit them down and they would be sitting there in front of this wheel and they'd be like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And they'd have their hands in the clay and I would teach them the steps. We always threw a cylinder. If you know anything about learning how to throw pottery on a wheel, you learn a cylinder first because it's the hardest thing to throw. It takes the most skill. And so when you can throw a cylinder, you can throw anything. I would sit them down and they would play, get really excited, get their hands all messy, right? And I would teach them how to create, throw the cylinder. And friends, they would just boom, that thing would go up like it was nothing. At night, my adult students would come in, right? And like clockwork, my adult students would sit down. They wouldn't even touch the clay. They were terribly nervous. They were trying to figure out how to not break the machine. They were worrying about all the things in the future. And they were completely not committed to play. Honestly, the idea of playing didn't even enter into their minds. They wanted to know how, when, how much, and how not to screw it up. So I would go through the same motions. I would teach them how to throw the cylinder. And um, the results were, let's just say it was shocking how incredible the results of the seven-year-olds were. Okay, so do you get where I'm going with this? When fear enters the picture, when we refuse to allow ourselves to play in this new thing we're doing, the end product suffers massively. So I'm going to argue here, whether you are watercoloring, whether you're cooking, you're getting into a new genre of cooking or baking, crocheting, whatever it is that you're doing to fire up your creative spirit, reignite something that you lost, heal from trauma and friends i'm not a doctor so just know that whatever creative endeavor that you are undertaking you have to find a way to toss the fear it needs to leave the flipping building friends and i know that's so much easier said than actually done but i'm here today to tell you that there is a way out there is a way beyond the fear and it's this Force yourself to play. Yes, I said it, forced play. What does that look like? Friends, it's sitting down in front of the clay and just digging your fingers in, not caring what your teacher is about to tell you that you're actually supposed to do with it. Sitting down with your watercolors, spraying them down, getting them all juicy, and maybe painting with your finger 
instead of the brush and finger painting with your watercolors, making a mess, grabbing water from your bowl with your hands and splashing it around the page, right? Maybe it's creating a recipe not from a book that's in front of you or an image on your screen on your iPad. Maybe it's choosing five ingredients, you know, a protein, a spice, a fat, and seeing what you can make with it without anyone telling you how. Just the idea of being so wild is terrifying, right? But here's why it's worth it. So if you look a little bit, I'm not gonna get into the crazy deep science of this all, but if you look into some of the research that has come out of the fight to prioritize the arts in public education, you're going to find a treasure trove of why kicking fear to the curb when you're in a new creative endeavor is so, so important. Art gives us a chance, scientifically proven, a chance to be in a, a state of awe and wonder. And being in a state of awe and wonder can actually heal us physically, mentally. Again, I'm not a doctor. So you can go and do your own research, but don't you wanna be in a state of awe and wonder? Don't you wanna give this creative endeavor that you are launching in your life a chance to actually heal you? So we're gonna play, friends. We're gonna play. Whatever it is that you are making, creating, doing in this creative space, figure out what it means to play in that space and you will see your journey completely explode. When you actually invest in the act of playing in your new journey, you'll be blown away. But remember, you have to force yourself. Here's a couple of things that you can do to force play. Limit your materials. I alluded to that earlier. So for me, if I really wanna just play and not worry about the end result, remember friends, this is ultimately about not caring about the end result, which I know is super hard. So for me, as a watercolorist, as a mixed media artist, I might stand in front of my painting table, close my eyes and grab the first five things that my hand touches, grab paper, sit down and make art with those five things only. That's a great way to play. I mentioned the example with cooking, kind of the same thing, right? Number two, use your materials in a completely crazy, stupid way. I alluded to that earlier with finger painting with watercolors, right? Maybe it's going outside, grabbing a cup full of dirt, putting a little water in it and making like a dirt paste out of it and paint with that. Heck, Sculpt with that. I know you like, Christy's completely lost her mind. Pfft, trust me, give yourself a trigger word. So when you're in the act, when you're doing the creative thing that you're so excited about and you feel all that crazy fear junk setting in, give yourself a trigger word. Decide, okay, when I hear all that crap creeping in, I'm going to say to myself, Pizza, and that is your trigger to step away, to grab something and just make a mess, to launch yourself into a mindful practice of fear, expulsion, and forced play. How are you feeling? You feel more armed to kind of dive back into this creative journey with some actual tactical strategic ways to push away fear. I know, I know, it's like crazy. Like you have to plan to be fearless, but you do. All right, friends, I cannot wait to hear your comments. What was your aha moment in this video? What made you go? Tell me in comments, we're gonna have a conversation, but friends, get onto it. Go grab your fear and just toss it. Okay, so this is a watercolor channel. So until next time, happy painting, happy art making, happy fear bashing. <laughs>